stage is really when I feel the most alive and the most like myself. You know, I love doing what I do. I love going on stage. I love the whole um, build up. You know, the, the few minutes before you go on stage when you're so excited and you want to go on stage but they're telling you you still have 10 minutes to go. You know, I, I love that sort of adrenaline rush that you get. You know, concert days are surprisingly um, very comforting to me. I love making music with my colleagues. I love working with conductors and fellow musicians and it, there's this rapport that goes on. If things work, uh, that's magic that you can't even explain. It's truly special and you, there's nothing more amazing than being a musician at that, at that instant. I don't even consider it a job. You know, it is my life. It is what I love to do and I feel very fortunate. I would really hope that when people come to a concert, for them to, to leave the concert thinking that they experienced something so beautiful um, that transported them somewhere else for two hours where they were able to experience something so beautiful and so um, inspiring that hopefully the next day they'll still remember the concert and you know hopefully even the next week they'll still remember it um, and that it'll even if they're walking around they'll, they'll carry it with them. Sarah, welcome to Talk Asia. Great to be here, thank you. And please tell me about your latest recording, Violin Concertos by Brooke and Brahms. Now, these are big, romantic pieces. They are. They are the bread and butter of the violin repertoire. Um, the Brahms was always something I wanted to be doing um, for the longest time. And uh, I wanted to keep it a, a German record. And I wanted there to be some sort of continuity between the two pieces. So we decided to make it a German record. We went to Dresden to record it and it was done with Kurt Mazur um, as a conductor. So it's, uh, it's, it's my pet project, it's my little baby. Now, here in Hong Kong, you're performing Brook. Yes. Do you research the composer, uh, his background, maybe his state of mind when he wrote the piece? I absolutely do. Yeah, so tell me about that. I absolutely do. Um, I think it's crucial mm -hmm. um, and imperative that you, you do try to um, read up uh, on the composer and to soak up as much info as you can um, before you even attempt to go on stage. Now correct me if I'm wrong here, but the Brook Violin Concerto is one of the first you ever played. You presented it at your audition into Juilliard right. at age five. Right. At age five. Yeah, ridiculous. How, how did that know. feel? <laughs> um, I probably would not do it now at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't do it. But when you're five, five and a half, you're a little fearless. Um, so yeah, the the Bruch Concerto and the the Mozart Concerto were my audition pieces to get into Juilliard, and for that reason, you know, the Bruch has always had a very special uh, place in my heart uh, because it was the the piece that got me into the school of my dreams. Um, and then I put it away for a while. You know, I put the concerto away for about ten years. Um, and only picked it up in my late teens and uh, fell in love with it all over again. Now you seem to specialize in big romantic concertos. Mm. Why is that? I think they suit my personality. Um, the big, um, dramatic, passionate, beautiful concertos, um, they're what I grew up with. You know, they're, they're what I feel the most comfortable with when I'm on stage. Um, I also think that um, when you're on stage, you do have a certain responsibility um, to, to give the very best version of yourself. And this is why I'm so selective about the repertoire that I play. If it's not you, if it doesn't fit your personality, you know, if, if you don't look good in miniskirts, don't wear miniskirts. You know, it's, it's that <laughs> sort of thing, you know. If you don't, you know, look good in trousers, then don't wear trousers. It's, I, I think it's really what fits best for your personality, what fits the best for, um, for your soul, for your, for your musical soul, and what you um, feel the most comfortable sharing 
with the audience. So are you a big romantic yourself? I am a huge romantic. <laughs> I am a huge romantic <laughs> at heart, yes. <laughs> In 2007, you recorded Vivaldi Four Seasons. Mm. Now, Four Seasons has been recorded so many times by so many different artists, so what were you able to offer that was new and distinctive? The Four Seasons was something that um, EMI had asked for about, um, for about 10 years. Mm. You know, for about a decade, you know, every meeting that I went into. It's a crowd pleaser. It, it is, and it's popular for a reason. You know, it's a, it's a beautifully written piece, and it's one of the few pieces that, um, that almost everyone can relate to, even if they're not musicians, and even if they have almost zero musical training, they will probably recognize some of the themes from the Four Seasons. So it has this immense popularity, uh, which is understandable, which was precisely the reason I wanted to wait before recording it and putting it down on tape. And it took me that long. It really took me that long to feel confident enough with myself and my interpretation of it and to find the right group and to figure out um, how and where and when I wanted to record the, the piece. 